Recently I purchased a uh, HF linear amplifier. Uh, there was one good amplifier which worked alright and then a seller threw in a second amplifier which was uh, not working. So uh, I opened up the uh, non-working one uh, out of curiosity to see if, uh, if I could find uh, if the, what was wrong with it. And uh, I went through the, uh, all the different items that I could see that uh, uh, looked like they might be faulty or not good enough. I did find uh, some coax, that had, uh, the RF output coax had shorted out and um, the inner insulation had melted, had come out of the centre, uh, a bit like candle wax. Uh, there were a few other items but uh, basically uh, it looked okay. I tested the tubes in another amplifier and they seemed to work. So um, I put it all together and, uh, and switched it on and I found the transformer started smoking. And it turned out that the transformer had shorted prime returns. So I decided to remove the transformer and see if I could get another one, but uh, these devices, you can just about replace anything, such as the switches, capacitors, uh, tuning uh, controls, just about everything, but the transformer is the one item that's very difficult to replace, and if you can find one that'll do the job, you're looking at several hundred dollars. So what to do? Uh, the actual amplifier all the other bits like the tuning components and the switch were okay and we could be used as spare parts for the good amplifier but um, what do I do with the transformer? Well one thing you can do is uh, if you can't find a replacement you can send the copper and the metal off to the scrap metal dealers and get a little bit of money for recycling or alternatively you can do you can try one thing which doesn't cost you that much and that is to rewind the transformer now that is a, a, a rather large task and it's not something to be easily undertaken however your choices are throw the thing away do nothing so you have a, a linear amplifier with missing the most vital component only good for parts nothing else or see if you can rewind the transformer so having nothing to lose I decided to rewind the transformer now the transformer itself was covered in fairly heavy lacquer as you can see on these frames uh, so the transformer was first put in a container of petrol for a few days until all the lacquer was softened and I was able to pull the laminations apart here are the component parts of the transformer the E's, the I's and then the windings there were two primary windings 120 volts each to be connected either in series or parallel for 240 or 120 volt working and then there was the high voltage the 800 volt secondary with a uh, which consisted of 0.45 millimeter wire and there were uh, 1120 turns the filament winding consisted of nine and a half or around nine and a half turns and that was for 6.3 volts at 10 amps and you can see that's a, a flat uh, copper wire heavy gauge the primary winding consisted of uh, one millimeter wire. Uh, so um, we took the wire off, we cleaned up the bobbin, which is this thing here. Uh, we had to do a bit of repair where it had uh, burnt through or overheated. The primary winding had shorter turns. And looking at the type of damage, which I've seen before, it may have been that caused by somebody feeding 240 volts into the unit when it was set for 110 or 115 volts. That also meant that the high voltage instead of being 800 volts would have been a lot more. It would have probably limited due to saturation but the RF amplifier tubes would have had a lot more volts on it. The RF output would have been a lot higher and might explain why the coax going from the in the pi coupler from the anodes of the valves to the was actually from the output of the pi coupler into the antenna was melted and shorted out so uh, there was quite a bit of damage there which indicates to me high levels of RF and there was also a, um, a shield electrostatic shield between the primary and secondary this of course mustn't go all the way around otherwise it forms a shorter turn so here is the, uh, the primary, 
I unwound the primary, counting the turns. I used a lathe and mounted the bobbin in a piece of timber with a uh, bolt through the centre, as in this uh, this one here. And then uh, counted the turns as they came off using the visual indicator to tell me each time I took the turns off and I would stop at several hundred and make a note on the side of the bobbin. So after a few days, it's quite a bit of work, doing a bit at a time, just taking my time. We removed all the windings, counted all the turns and had a pretty good idea. And we've, uh, this one you see has been, has got an araldite to repair some of the bits that were uh, damaged due to the heat. So we, uh, we have now procured some wire, one millimetre wire, 485 grams, from a local supplier in Adelaide. Very good quality wire, high temperature. And similarly for the secondary winding, 0.45 millimetre, 460 grams. According to the weight, that should be enough to give me the, um, the required number of turns. The 6.3 volt winding, I don't know about that one. It's uh, you, the thing you have to watch is that there's no. Um, if you want to reuse it, that the lacquer isn't broken anyway. Uh, a shorter turn there would be quite disastrous. But you can get uh, suitable wire of a gauge that will give you 10 amps. There's nine turns there, and all of these turns gave me the turns per volt, which is very important. So now the next stage is to fit the new wire on the bobbin core and also apply some insulation between layers or wherever it's needed. Uh, for that I'm going to use uh, baking paper which uh, is designed to uh, stay in an oven without catching fire up to several hundred degrees. It's probably even better than the original paper that was in this transformer although there was no paper between individual layers only between the high voltage and the low voltage ends. Uh, we'll try the baking paper. Um, it's, it's thin enough and it's, uh, it measures no resistance at all and I imagine its voltage breakdown is quite high. I've now uh, cleaned up the bobbin as you can see here. Cleaned it all up, used some araldite to repair you know, the areas that were damaged due to the heat. And I've mounted the bobbin on a shaft which is held by a couple of brackets and we've also put the new wire, the roll of the new wire on a shaft with a couple of brackets and I've commenced wiring the transformer. I've now put uh, one layer on down here. I'm using the nuts here to tighten or loosen the tension on the uh, spools. So by tightening the nut I can put more or less tension on the wire as I'm turning the bobbin and uh, winding the wire onto that bobbin. The insulation that's over the wire right that you can see is actually Captain Tape. Captain Tape is a tape material used by the PCB manufacturing industry for solder masking. It, uh, this is a 50 mil roll, costs $9 and its properties are that it's got an insulation of around about 6,000 volts and temperature greater than 300 degrees centigrade. Now the normal specifications for a transformer uh, insulating tape is around about 130 degrees. In other words if the transformer reaches those sort of temperatures it's probably not not much good. However this tape exceeds that. The other thing is that normal tape is around about 3 or 4 kV, maybe even 5 kV depending the um, insulation on the enamel wire, uh, this is extra high voltage, it's probably several thousand volts, and it's also high temperature. So as you can see I've made one layer, I've laid down one layer, just take it very slowly, very steadily. You can't rush these things, you just do one layer at a time, have a rest, make sure all the wires are nice and uh, even. And I've also marked here on my uh, temporary board that it took 59 turns for that first layer. When winding these transformers there are certain uh, uh, regulations or uh, things that you need to follow. 
Uh, one of them is that the insulation between the primary and the secondary uh, must be at least 3 kilovolts. Also there must be a 6 millimeter air gap between the primary and any secondary and that's achieved by laying the last layer the last turn on the last layer at least 3 millimeters in from the end and similarly for the first winding of the first of the second layer that then leaves a 6 millimeter air gap usually there will be a filler in there to stop the wire creeping across that gap the other thing is that the wires coming out of the transformers need to be covered in Teflon or some high temperature insulation we've reached the uh, we've done the primary and now we're doing the secondary winding the um, and we count the turns as we go along as you can see and we also have been laying down the um, the insulation between each layer we're using the captain tape which is quite thin all of it here. There it is there. And we just wrap it around. You'll see some crinkles. Those crinkles get, go, uh, get squashed effectively once you start to wind the wire on. I find that the, um, the wire lays down quite neatly. It's at the ends where uh, things get a little bit hairy. Um, but uh, it seems to be coming up okay. Well, we've now completed the rewind of the bobbin for this uh, uh, linear amplifier. We've managed to get the two secondaries inside the the frame of the bobbin. This uh, this little um, E piece tells me that um, it's uh, all cleared. This is the 6.3 volt 10 amp winding for the filaments, and uh, we've insulated every layer with this captain tape which is quite thin but uh, got a, a fairly high voltage rating of about 6 kV and here's some Teflon wire which we're going to use for connections to the uh, particular wires that are coming out of the core. So the next phase now is to fit the laminations. These are the laminations and that's usually a bit of fun. The, uh, you find that they're you don't always get them all in, you've got to try and force them in, press them in. Now the last ones are the ones that are hard. So that's uh, the next phase of this uh, re transformer rebuild and then we're going to try it out and see if, there's, if it works and there are no sparks.